75 years. Uh, I was about eight years old when I was introduced to this song, uh, and it makes me happy. This song is a very curious <coughs> song. Uh, and number 229 in the Burgundy Book. Things. 
One, one time God told him to take off all his clothes and go do the nation of Israel and preach. Uh, I'm, I'm glad God didn't call me to do that. Amen. Uh, I get sunburned a lot. Uh, but he, here he, he says some rather strange things. Uh, verse number 5. Uh, God tells Isaiah, he says, prepare the table. Uh, watch in the watchtower. Uh, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman. Let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried, A lion! My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, there cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all graven images of their gods he hath broken unto the ground. O oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. Heavenly Father, help us to see what the watchman saw. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this is a very strange passage. Verse 5 and 6, um, it, it, it basically sets some watchmen up, and they're supposed to be looking for stuff. And uh, then he wants this watchman to tell what he sees. And I'm going to preach about what he sees. Uh, now, this led me to a very strange thing, looking this stuff up on the Internet, just for the fun of it. Sometimes I, I, I tell Wikipedia, I type in what I'm preaching on, and weird stuff comes up. So I type watchman in to uh, the internet, and you know what came up? Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear. Remember Smokey the Bear? They don't have yeah. Smokey the Bear much anymore. But when I was a kid, they had posters everywhere in school, and Smokey the Bear said, only you can prevent a forest fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was kind of like the advertising icon of the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, they had a wildfire prevention campaign <coughs> It was the longest running per public service announcement campaign in U.S. history. It ran decades. They, I guess they still do smoking the bear somewhere. Um, um, the Ad Council, the Forest Service, the National Association <coughs> of State Foresters uh, partnership together. Uh, they paid an ad agency to create this character smoking bear. Now, everybody knows uh, that in the 40s they rescued a little bear cub uh, from uh, some wildfire out west and of course the, the firemen took the little cub in and uh, they named him Smokey and uh, they, they eventually grew up and they kept him in a cage when it got real big and, and he lived for decades and people would come by and see Smokey the bear and so uh, one day somebody said well why don't we, why don't we have a campaign and and we'll tell them Smokey told them, you know, to, to not to have forest fires. And, and so that's what they did. And I, it, I imagine it was effective. Um, my parents smoked years and years and years ago, and they quit, thank God. But I remember we would go camping, and uh, uh, Daddy would uh, be smoking a thing, and he would get ready to, you know, flick the cigarette off in the woods. And I would turn to him and say, Daddy, oh, you can prevent a forest fire. And he would stub it out and put it, put it somewhere in the can or something and call it the trash. Um, so it was very effective. They brainwashed everybody. Uh, but it, what it was was to get the American people to watch that they didn't start fires and watch other people to make sure they didn't start fires. Because there are certain times a year out there that was a big, huge forest out west that things are bone dry. And if we're not careful, 
you know, they'll have the whole place burning down. Now, sometimes it's beneficial, believe it or not, because um, it burns all the undergrowth off and it doesn't really hurt those big, big tall trees they have there. But still, uh, there's some things that you just don't want to burn down. Um, and uh, they took a survey in 2021 uh, of campers and people that did outdoor recreational things like boaters and things. And they asked them, they had, uh, they had several images of things, and they asked them if they recognized any of the things. 80% of all the people they surveyed recognized who Smokey the Bear was. And he hadn't been in, in active for a long time at that point. So, Christian, God has made us a watchman over people's souls. And we need to become a good watchman. And there's some things we need to watch and watch out for. Because, uh, you know, there are things out there that want to stop you, things that want to harm the church, things that want to stop the church, stop the gospel, certainly stop gospel preaching. And we need to watch those, those things. Uh, first of all, one of the things that you need to look for <coughs> found in verse number 7 and it talks about all these chariots well uh, I don't know if you know it or not but when the automobile was first invented people called it the, the, the motorized chariot uh, and so I, you can apply it to that and I want to say you need to watch out for the traffic you say well, that's, that's kind of my, no even in those days you had things trundling up and down the roads uh, and, and back in uh, Isaiah's day, uh, certainly in the Roman Empire, the Romans, one of the best things they did was they built roads everywhere. And, uh, you know, you may be, and those roads really weren't for walking on, they were for chariots. So if you're walking down the Roman road, and there was no law against it, but you had to be careful to, if you heard a rumbling and some horses behind you, you need to find somewhere off the side of the road you can get and let the thing pass because, you know, they'd run over you because it was their road. They could do anything they wanted to. Um, so what do you see when you look down the traffic? Well, some people, uh, when they're going down the road, they have the bare minimum. You know, they have a little car. Uh, it's not very big. They couldn't, they couldn't uh, you know, haul their furniture in it to move or... Uh, they barely make it to the grocery store and have enough room to put their groceries in. Usually it's single people, they don't have any kids, you know. Uh, they may have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, they may tuck them around. Uh, but you know, it's just basic transportation. It goes from point A to point B. Uh, in Mark chapter 8, verse 7 and 9, um, let's see, is this the paper that I had passed out? Yeah, uh, Clay, you want to pass those papers out? I think that'll help everybody. Uh, it's been a busy week, guys. I've got another busy week coming. I'm going to try to print Brother Demopolis 30,000 uh, Ukrainian tracts. And uh, that that's, uh, takes some time. And I've got a lot on my mind, unfortunately. All right. You see there... Under introduction 1 and 8, says Mark 8, 7 and 9. And they had a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled, and they took up the broken meat uh, that was left, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. Now, so why did you read all that? For the last little bit, he sent them away. Can you imagine what the roads were like after he got feeding all those people? He sent them back to their house. I'd hate to have been someone in a hurry trying to travel somewhere with all those people going every which way, because that's a lot of people. I mean, if you uh, sat at a railroad track, you know the gates come down, and sometimes you get these long old freight trains, you know, and they just go and go and go and go. That's probably what it was like, you know, watching all the people go by. So, okay, you know, 
<laughs> Finally, if you got tired, say, excuse me, excuse me, I need to go this way. Uh, but, you know, uh, they didn't have, they had to get home. They, didn't, they, didn't, they got something to eat. They had been with Jesus for a couple days. And imagine some of them were anxious to get home. Um, and they wanted to get home before it was too late. Because back in those days, they didn't have such thing as street lights. And so when you when the sun went down, it was dark, and you get lost if you're not careful. So uh, some people, uh, it's a minimum of traffic, and then some people, it's a whole bunch of traffic. And I want to say this about traffic, and this goes back into Bible days. Some people were just jerks when they drive. <laughs> you say, Brother Jeff, no, they're jerks. I'm sorry. They, 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 they don't care about other people. They'll dart in front of people. They'll cause accidents. You know, just because just because they want to get in that lane to go to Walmart, they got to get there now. Uh, look, let me tell you a secret about Walmart down here. It's got more than one entrance. If you miss the first one, you've got a second one. And look, you can always go around, turn around, try it again. Uh, and they're not going to sell out before you get there. First um, Samuel twenty-five three on the paper on the B says. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance, but the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was one of the house of Caleb. Uh, that's Bible talk for, he was a jerk, bonafide jerk, and you know what? He mistreated David and his men and got and killed him. Um, Matthew 25, 24. Uh, and then he which received the one talent came and said, My Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sowed, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. So, in this parable, this guy, uh, he's accusing the Lord that was passing out the money of being a hard man. Uh, in other words, he was a jerk. He was accusing him of being a jerk. Uh, of course, this guy, Matthew, is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't accuse the Lord of being a jerk or ever you. That's a very dangerous thing to do. But people, <coughs> people can be jerks. They can be hard. They can be churlish. Um, then some people, thank the Lord, are very watchful and careful in what they do. Um, and I thank God for people. They're a joy to have on the highway. Because not only do they look out for them, but they look out for you too. Um, I was looking on YouTube and I always get these weird little things that come up on YouTube uh, but I have a lot of them uh, are like traffic stops and uh, so you see this guy's got a he's got a dash cam he's pointed out the front of his car and some car swerves in front of him and stops about three car lengths in front of him and the doors pop open and this man comes trundling out and I said, oh boy, this guy's going to break the window and punch this guy or something. He's mad about something. But no, he went up to the car and, and he went like this and he took his hand and he shut the guy's hood. <laughs> it was open. I said, well, that was kind of nice. <laughs> he was looking out. <laughs> That's refreshing. Someone that looks out for the other driver. Uh, Revelation 3, 2 tells Christians, be watchful <coughs> and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Titus 3.8, this is a faithful saying, and these things uh, I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, for these things are good and profitable unto men. So one part in the Bible tells them to watch, and the other says, look, be good to people, be a good woman, be a good man, be a good child, be a good Amen. teenager. Uh, <clears throat> and and because if you're good, God God will look after you and send you good people. Yeah. Uh, there was an old preacher named Henry Drummond, and he tells uh, this story of an incident uh, one time when this, uh, in India when they had a big flood. He says, once during some of the floods in India, the whole valley was inundated and the inhabitants who escaped drowning were gathered on a peak of a solitary hill. Uh, it was the only one that was still visible and the only one that would hold all the villagers in it. And it was a pretty big, pretty big little hill. And uh, 
As they stood there, uh, anxiously waiting for the waters to subside, they suddenly saw a big Bengal tiger, tiger swimming through the water, and in his mouth, uh, he had a little baby cub. And he got to the, the peak, and they thought, oh boy, we're in for it now. A tiger's going to kill us all. He just kind of plopped down, the mama plopped down on the ground, and, you know, uh, the little cub was alive and, and alive, and, and the thing went to sleep. Well, after a few minutes, uh, one of the British officers that had been stranded on top of the hill uh, came forward, and he took his sidearm out, and he popped the bullet in the cub's uh, head, and he popped the bullet in the mama, mama tiger's <coughs> head. And the people, the people were upset. So why in the world did you do that? And he said, well, I'll tell you. Right now, this tiger is tired, and all it wanted was to save it and its cub's life. But if it gets enough rest and gets up on its four feet and the cub's okay, guess what? You're going to be the next meal. And I'm doing this to preserve your life because this is a dangerous animal. And Henry Drummond was making this point. Look, sometimes the devil makes stuff that looks harmless. May have a potential of, you know, harming you, <coughs> but he makes it around where, oh, you feel sorry for it or something, and you take it in, and guess what? If it hangs around long enough, it'll eat you alive. It'll eat you alive. So watch out. Watch out for the traffic, whether it's a car or a swimming tiger. Uh, then in verse number 8, it said, And he cried, A lion! Now you need to watch out for the traffic, but you need to watch out for the lion. Now we know who the lion is, don't we? Let me tell you something about lions. Lions come in the dark places. You won't get attacked in the middle of a field where there's no trees and no grass on the savanna plains of Africa, uh, a lion's not going to come and run out and get you. But if you go over by, let's say there's a little outcropping of rocks somewhere, and there's a little thing of trees, you know, like an oasis, and you go over there to, maybe there's a little spring, and you're getting a drink of water and to find a shady spot, that's where you've got to be careful, because that's where the lions hide. And yeah, they'll... They're waiting there in the dark bah, to come out and get you. Psalm 10, verse 9 says, He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. The den is a dark place. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor when he draws them into his net. A lion's a very sneaky animal. He hunts, but he hunts by getting his prey to come too close and and, and get in where he can get them. That's how the devil gets people. He gets them in close somewhere where he can get them. <coughs> Lamentations chapter 3 verse 10 says he was unto me as a bear lying in wait and as a lion in the secret places. So it's well documented in, in, in the Bible that uh, lions, uh, they stink around in the dark so they can get people. And you know what they're after in the Bible a lot of times? They're after the flock. They're after the sheep. And we're God's flock. The devil is after us. He is, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 34, uh, David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. So here a bear and a lion are working together, and they're, they're, they're trying to get the little, the little poor little baby sheep because they, 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 maybe they don't know what's going on. And by the time they figure out and start running, then they're gone. The rest of the sheep have been around a while. They, they, they have sense enough to get, get away. But he comes after the young ones in the flock and the weak ones in the flock and the sick ones in the flock because they have a hard time running. So this is why we have to be spiritually fit. This is why we need to read the Bible every day and pray every day to keep, to keep our spiritual strength up so the devil don't come and get us. It requires a constant vigil. In the Martin Luther's hymn, The Mighty, Mighty Fortress is Our God, 
the third verse says this. It says, And though the world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath will his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little world, word <coughs> fell him. And that word comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to conquer the devil one day. But right now, he's still going about. Remember 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion goes, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So watch out for the traffic, watch out for the lion. And then there's something that's good we need to watch out for. This is why you ought to read the Bible every day, because if you, if you don't know these things exist, you can't watch out for it. Watch out for the fulfillment of God's word. There in chapter 9, <coughs> he talks about Babylon falling. Well, at the time Isaiah wrote this, this was uh, about a couple hundred years before Babylon finally came down. Um, so you see that, or at least a hundred years before, uh, God knew what he was going to do to that city and that empire and that form of government. And he sent the prophets to, to tell people there in Isaiah's time that, yeah, Babylon may come and they may conquer you and they may take you away, but, but God is going to conquer them. And look, the devil may come and he may get you and beat you in a battle or two. Uh, you may get run over in the traffic of this world, spiritually speaking, but one of these days, God is going to be the winner. And you have to keep that in mind. 1 Peter 3, or 2 Peter 3, rather. 3 verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we... According to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. James chapter 5 verse 8 says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You've got all kinds of Bible promises in the Old and New Testament about Jesus' is coming. I know it's been 2,000 years. I know, uh, I know I've been waiting my whole life, but I'm still waiting. I'm still looking every day for the Lord to come back and get us. Why? He promised. Amen. I haven't had any work to promise yet. Amen. This same verse in Peter, notice I just repeated it. Some things are going. You know, they've been around a long time, but God's going to get rid of them. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I went to the store yesterday, and uh, I bought me a couple cans of wasp spray. Last week, I had two or three big nests right there at the front door of my house. And so I had some of that stuff. So I opened the side door and I snuck around the side of the house and I sprayed, I sprayed the guts out of that can. There was no more left when I got done. I came in, uh, I came out the next day and there was nothing but dead wasp laying everywhere. So I knocked them down with my cane and swept them off in the yard. So I came out the other day and I looked around the porch. Sure enough, there were some more waspies. And we went down yet uh, the other day, Wednesday night, or was it last Sunday night? I don't remember. <coughs> and there was a big thing down by the print shop. They go, and we sprayed, we sprayed some of that stuff we got back here, and, and there was a bunch of waspies on the ground. But they built another one, persistent little boogers. Uh, but one of these days, stuff like that's going to go. All, all the health problems we have, going to go. 
all the evil, wretched, wicked things that you see in this world, they're going to go. They're going to go. People are going to uh, beat their swords into plowshares and and God's going to bring peace on the earth for a thousand years. And then he's going to burn the place out and start over again with new stuff. I wonder what the new stuff will be like. I want to be like the old stuff, but we don't know. But some things are going to just have to go. And you know, there's some things in your life that just have to go. You know that? And some of these things are going to go away for good. Absolutely never coming back again. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only who now let it let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The devil's going to be gone for good one day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 2 Peter 3, <coughs> verse 10. Now we're going to back up a verse that we already read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. See then, and all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought we to be in all? Holy conversation and godliness. A guy named Stuart Briscoe told this little story. He says, I remember a young man who was a member of a group that my wife and I took to Holland for a conference. He had a problem with smoking. Uh, every evening he used to go along to a quiet canal so he could have his um, cigarette in the evening. And it was a Christian conference. So this guy had a smoking problem. The boy was absolutely addicted. and uh, He had been, since he was 12 years old, smoking cigarettes. Uh, in fact, he had smoked so heavily that he had to manufacture his own supplies. So not only was he smoking, but he was rolling them. One night, he, I talked to the group about the words of Jesus the state that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. In John 8, 32. Then I showed that uh, when the Lord said the truth shall be emancipating, he was referring to himself, for he added, it, so if the Son set you free, you shall be free indeed. Obviously, he was using uh, the term truth as a description of himself. Of course, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, I tried to show the young people that I was talking to that uh, whatever was binding them in their Christian experience, the Lord through His indwelling life could and would set them free. Unbeknownst to me, this hungry little smoking boy, listen, he was hungry to be rid of the habit that he had had most of his life. He heard that a Christian and a person who had power greater than any other power was within him. Therefore he knew that he could claim uh, to be a Christian and he also had to claim power over this thing that he was addicted to. So he evaluated his life and his uh, spiritual condition and knew that some things had to go. As usual he went to the canal that evening where he used to smoke. For the first time he went there longing to be set free. He did an unusual thing. He took out all his cigarettes and one by one he threw them into the canal. Then he threw the rolling papers and he threw the uh, stuff that he used to, to make the cigarettes and, and, and they floated down. And each, each cigarette that he would throw, he would say, if the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. If the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And God gave him the victory then and there. Naturally, he had other problems to overcome, but this man testified that this fellow had a new strength and a, and a new purpose in his life, and he turned out to be a great witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've heard these kind of stories all over his life. God can set you free of stuff. Amen. And we need to watch for that. In conclusion, on your paper, 1 Peter 
four seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch on the prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Now, everybody has problems. Everybody has stuff that they have to face every day. Some people it's some habit, some people it's some condition, <coughs> some people are fighting their health problems, some people are dealing with family issues, some people are, uh, you know, they, they have all kinds of things coming to their life. But this morning, God told us to get in the watchtower and watch out. And God will send you deliverance. If the, if the Son set you free, ye shall be free in me. So this morning, what's bugging you? What's causing you pain? What, what's, what's haunting your life to give you trouble? That you need to, God to help you overcome or to, to bring it into the situation where you can handle it again. That's what you need to pray as we've got our heads bowed and eyes closed. You say, preacher, how about you? Yeah, i got things i got to pray about. I tell you what, no one's exempt from this. The only person that was exempt from this was the Lord Jesus Christ when he walked the earth. And now he's up in heaven and he don't have to deal with it either. But he looks down on this earth and he listens to us pray. And we need to bring those things to the Lord in prayer. Now, we're going to go to heaven one day and all these things that we have to deal with are going to pass away. But right now, we still got to deal with them. So we're going to take a few seconds here, a few, a few moments. And I want you to pray to the Lord and ask him to help you with the problems and things that you're concerned about. Because he will listen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that you would hear our prayers. He said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Lord, I pray you just help us to rest in you. Thank you for the congregation this morning. Uh, God, uh, I pray you help the ones that aren't here this morning, that they'd like to be here. Uh, then there are some people that don't really care if they're here or not. And Lord, you need to help them to want to come to church Lord, we miss their fellowship. We love them and the Lord. Help them to realize that. And God, I pray that they'll come to church. And Lord, they can get a blessing here if they'll come. And Lord, all these things we've offered up in prayer this morning, I pray you'll take care of them, Lord, and to set us free from them. Lord, come back and get us. That would be the, the greatest setting free that I can imagine. But if you leave us here, God, Please help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming this morning. <laughs>